Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. You know New York, you need New York. You know you need unique New York. Now try that as Christopher Walken. You know New York, you need New York. You know you need unique New York. (laughs) Uh, It fell apart at the end there, but you know what? It was fun. It was fun nonetheless. I'm going to get a bunch of people. That was a horrible walk in. What are you doing? But you know what? I've done enough good ones. I stand by it, especially since my brain is fried today. Everybody, give me a break. It has been a nonstop marathon of posting, marketing, artwork, YouTube, editing, filming. I did a rap, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, I had to write and record that. <laughs> If you'd like to see more about that, just go to my YouTube channel, PMS Artwork, everywhere. You know the drill. But uh, yeah, it's going to start off today. You know what? going to start off the episode with some good news. Found out yesterday that Feedspot named this little podcast that we have here, The Living Artist, as one of the top 25 art podcasts you must follow in 2020. So there you go, everybody. Actually made number 11 which is awesome. I saw that I was up right up above one of my favorite art podcasts I used to listen to before I started this whole thing. So that was thrilling and validating and I was very humbled to get that and to see that news. So thank you to Feedspot. If you just Google top art podcasts, they're one of the first things that pops up. So it's going to be awesome to get some more traffic through them and also give a shout out to them, get some more traffic through Feedspot as well from here. But that was awesome news, and I'm thrilled to share that with you guys. So that segues into a little bit of what we're going to talk about today, which is daily routines, but also gratitude. Gratitude is kind of a daily routine for me. Whether or not I say I'm going to sit down and do a gratitude practice or not, uh, I do incorporate gratitude into my life. And just to show a little gratitude to everybody here for helping me make that top 25 list. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for supporting the podcast. I hope you continue to do so. Hope you tell your friends. Hope you spread the word. If you haven't been able to leave a review or give it a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, please go over and do that. It literally takes you like two seconds to click a five-star rating. And if you have a minute, you know, you can also leave a nice review. Helps people to trust this podcast and to give it a shot. And it also just helps with all the algorithms and everything that are out there. So I really appreciate your support on that. I appreciate everybody who's been on the podcast, all the guests, anybody who's ever done anything to help this podcast grow. I'm just showing my gratitude for you right now. So thank you so much. Uh, Let's get on to daily routines because this is something that most people don't understand about artists at all. They think. Oh, you're an artist. You just spend all your time in the studio. It's like I get all these questions from people all the time. or like, or comments from people all the time. It's like, Preston, it just seems like you're painting all the time. Or, oh, happy painting today. Or even friends, you know, will talk and they'll say, oh, I probably caught you in the studio. I probably caught you in the middle of a painting. And it's fine. Like, you know, that's great. It's flattering. But at the same time, it just reminds me of how little people know of what actually goes into the business of being an artist. You're not always painting. Uh, As a matter of fact, painting is probably 30% of my time that I spend every day. A lot of it goes into a lot of other things to keep this beast fed. 
and moving. It's like, love is like a shock. Oh, I, went, I did like a Woody Allen, Christopher Walken hybrid there. Let's, let, let's try that again. I think it's like, it's like a shock. Odd is like a shock. You, you got to constantly feed it or, or it dies. I don't know if my impressions are on today. I think I'll just chalk it up to fried brain. Fried, fried green brain tomatoes. Yeah, so let's get into daily routines a little bit. Basically, I get up early. I used to stay up super late, and now I get up as early as when I used to go to bed sometimes. But I get up at like 5.45 with my wife every day, walk her down to her car, and then come back up, change my clothes, and go right for a run. I do like a two-mile run as fast as I can, push myself. If I'm not if I'm not sweating, if I'm not beat red, I haven't done my job. It's like DNA cleansing. <laughs> yeah, it just really... If you have anxiety, if you suffer from anything like that, anxiety or fear or, you know, just you suffer from low energy, this is the way to go. This is the way to start your day because first thing in the morning before your brain clicks in and starts to give you, you know, complaints or does its little thing where it tries to manipulate you into not working out. I get going before it even has a chance to get going itself and I get down there and I start running and I really push myself, put on some music. And, you know, it only takes me like 15, 20 minutes tops with the stretching and the running. But by the time I'm done, man, I feel great. I got those endorphins going. And then I go right to take a shower. I do a cold shower. Or, I mean, I I don't start off super cold, but I will end with a cold shower for at least a minute. And that really, not only is that good for waking you up, not only is it good for your metabolism, but it's also just it's a mood enhancer. It's really good for your circulation going from hot to cold. If you can do a, a hot cold change off, that's very good for your uh, circulatory system. But I just do it and it makes me feel good. It elevates my mood. It wakes me up. So basically in my first 30 minutes of the day, I've done a two mile run as hard as I can and a cold shower. And you know what? After that, you have pretty much won. You can go back to bed after that. No, but after you've done those two things, it's like those are the hardest two things you'll probably tackle most days. So once you've already done that, it's like you've already won. So then everything else you're going to do throughout the day is not going to seem hard by comparison. So that's great. And then I go straight into meditation. I do a about a 10 minute meditation with my interval breathing process. I put that in the Breathe With Me episode. If you need to refresh, a little refresher course, go back and check that out. But Yeah, I do a 10-minute, 10-time interval breathing process, and sometimes I will incorporate the gratitude in there. Sometimes I'll incorporate visualization. Sometimes I'll just chill the fuck out and calm down, but that really gets me centered. And then I'm off to going downstairs. I make some mate, yerba mate, which is an Argentinian drink, or South American drink. It is highly caffeinated, but it's something you can sip throughout the day. And what it does is it keeps me fresh throughout the day, keeps me focused, but also it doesn't give you the jitters as much as like regular coffee does. And it has a lot of antioxidants, a lot of really good things, um, more than green tea even. So that's awesome. Very healthy. And I will not eat. I know um, intermittent fasting is very popular right now, but I've been doing this for a while. Most of the data I've heard, if you can make it till about 14 to 16 hours, that's very powerful. It just, it has a lot of health benefits. I'm not a doctor, as Tim Ferriss says. I don't play one on the internet, but you can check out uh, intermittent fasting. I don't have time to go into that, but maybe I will on another podcast. But it cleanses your body. It's great for your metabolism. It's great for kind of cleaning your cells. Like it's almost like you're starving these bad cells in your body. So it's like another way of cleansing your body. I do that. And so I won't eat until about 11 a.m., which is typically about 14 hours since the last time I ate the night before watching a movie with my wife. But then I get right into, after making the mate, I get right into my art practice. So this is probably around 8 a.m. by this point. And I just get going uploading all my work. If I have to take pictures of new work, I will take it with my iPhone. And then I load them in and I will do all the Photoshopping, all the manipulation, all the in-context photos, the side photos, the, you know, from an angle, textured photos, all that stuff. And then I will load into Photoshop and and I will optimize all of those photos and save them. And then I will start my process of uploading to all the different marketplaces. Most days, 
it's like Artfinder, Sachi, Singularart, my website, sometimes Artsy Home, sometimes Artsy, sometimes uh, Zatista, sometimes Etsy, you name it, whatever you want. But I, I always hit at least four or five of those every single day. And if I have an off day and I can't do it, sometimes I will kind of revamp an older one and put that up. But this takes a long time, this process. It typically takes about three hours to do the whole process of getting the pictures, uploading them, putting all the whatever, the, you know, the SEO, the description, cataloging it all, and then doing the social media sharing. It'll take me about three hours straight, no breaks. So that's every day. And then I will take like a little break at 11 a.m. That's when I start eating. I'll make myself a little green juice. I have this little protein green juice powder that I put in with some fruit, a little bit of veggie sometimes, and some sunflower seed butter. I'll mix that up, make a little more mate, warm up the hot water, and just get a break and typically talk to my wife for about 15 minutes on her break if everything aligns. And then it's back into the grind. I'll do some miscellaneous stuff. If I didn't finish all the social media, I'll finish that in the next hour to hour and a half. So basically between like 1130 and one, I will finish all of those miscellaneous things that I need to do. And sometimes this includes uh, YouTube stuff. Sometimes it includes filming something for YouTube or sometimes developing some ideas for YouTube or a podcast or sometimes a painting. If I have a really, really slow day, which hardly ever happens anymore, I will do another 10 minute meditation, but that doesn't happen very often. So I'm pretty busy through that time. And then by about one o'clock or one thirty, when that rolls around, I will have like a protein bar or a little lunch and maybe talk to the wife for a brief period of time again. Most times we don't get a chance to talk that often because she's really busy too. But then it's time to flip the script, turn the hat around, like over the top. When I turn my hat around, it's like a switch. I feel like a machine. A truck. Yeah. So anyway, throw back to uh, <laughs> over the top from the 80s. Sly Sylvester Stallone. If you haven't seen it, just see it because it's fun. It's the 80s. Who cares if it sucks? It's a lot of fun. But anyway, I will flip the switch and I'll get back to into the studio. I'll start painting. Um, I'll spend probably about three to four hours in the studio painting, uh, doing a new painting or revamping something or building an assembled piece Whatever it is I'm doing in the studio, that's my time to be creative. So I'll throw on some music, uh, some music that gets me going, that gets me creative. And that's my time to kind of let loose. I don't know. I feel like a clam in a shell. I feel like that's my that's my space. And it always reinvigorates me. because Some of the other stuff is very, it's like a left brain, right brain switch, right? A lot of the stuff at the beginning, you feel almost like a business person, like an entrepreneur. It's not always fun. Uh, it's very, very important, but it's not always fun. And that's my time to go have fun and be creative and start doing some new ideas. Now, ever since the advent of the podcast and the YouTube channel, this takes up a lot of my time because I shoot, edit, act, create, write these scripts, whatever, um, come up with the ideas, same with the podcast. I don't always have as much time as I used to to paint. I used to paint about eight to 10 paintings a week which is a lot, I realize. <laughs> but um, I have such a big body of work still right now that I really don't need to do that as much. And also with being really busy with the other things now, I typically paint about between two to five paintings a week now, which is still plenty, right? It still gives me um, plenty of work to upload and to backlog. And if I don't have enough work to upload, you know what? I can revamp some old stuff or I can like something that hasn't sold in the past that I think should have sold. I can start focusing on that, getting that back up to the forefront of like my social media presence or my art marketplaces. So that is also very good and valid and something that I like to do. But yeah, uh, one of the things that's important to me is I'm always have my headphones on in the morning during the day. I'm either listening to some calm music while I'm getting going. Sometimes I'll put on a podcast, which gets me going too. It's all about keeping your brain fresh. So Sometimes you get stale with the music, you know, put on a podcast. I'll put on like some Tim Ferriss or some Pete Holmes if I want to get into a good humorous mood. That kind of gives me a little break from the monotony too. And then when I'm painting, 99% of the time it is music. It's like a playlist of, of music that I paint to. It really just gets me into the mood. If, if I'm not feeling, I don't know, like if I'm not 
dancing a little bit. If I'm not feeling it, feeling the the groove uh, with the music, then I'm not firing on all cylinders. I'm not in that flow state, that kind of state that I want to be when I'm painting. So always good to have music. And then, you know, 4.30, five rolls around. My wife is off work and it's time to start cleaning up and get down. And a lot of times I'll start some dinner while she's on her way home or I'll do the cooking. Sometimes we share that responsibility when she gets home, if I'm painting too late, but a lot of times it's me. And then you know what? We sit down and the rest of the night is unwinding time. I unplug from my phone for the most part. Maybe my wife and I will play some games on the phone for half an hour. And then it's just time to chill out. Sometimes we'll breathe together. Most times we are just ready to watch a movie. And then you know what? We go to bed. We get up, rinse and repeat. We do it all over again. So I'm sure I left out some things, but I just wanted to kind of brain dump my daily routines and get that out. So as you can see, (laughs) it's not all fun and games. It's not all uh, prancing around the studio, just playing with paint all day. I would love to do that, but I would probably be broke if I did that all day every day (laughs) because I would be going through so many materials and I wouldn't have any space to store the paintings anymore. But yeah, it's something that has worked for me over the years. It's something that I've developed over the years. And it's like, if I don't have these daily routines in place, if I don't know what I'm doing, if I don't treat it like a job, like a full-time job, like a job that you go to and sit down at a desk, then, you know, some of the wheels start falling off. If I don't work out every day, if I don't meditate, the wheels start falling off. I start losing some motivation. I start losing some energy. If I'm not eating well, I start losing some energy. I need to be firing on all cylinders to get all the stuff done that I do. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stuff. And it's a lot of, like I said, flipping the switch from left brain to right brain. So you need to be on top of your game. That's part of the reason why I also uh, stopped drinking because I wasn't sharp enough to do this. This is what works for me. Maybe you can take some of these things and apply them. But maybe if you're not getting the results that you want from your art or from your art career, maybe it's time to start implementing some of these. Maybe it's uh, it's time to start taking it a little more seriously and making a routine about it. You know, making it seem like that, like a desk job or something you go to. Now, look, it's not boring. It's not like oh my God, you know, I, I can't believe I have to go to work and market my work all day, every day. How boring. No, I mean, it's, it is still fun. I would much rather be doing this than anything else. It's just every day, six or seven days a week, you know, um, it can seem monotonous after a while, but that's the time when gratitude starts to come back in. See how I'm bringing it full circle to gratitude, 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 gratitude. Oh, I want to watch gratitude tonight. I think that sounds like fun. That's a good one to unplug with. No, but, um, you know, bringing it back to gratitude, that's where you can kind of snap yourself out of these, this negative spiral you can fall into because it's very easy for your brain to switch back over to complaining mode, right? Oh, you know, I'm, all I want to do in life is be a full-time artist. Oh, I'm a full-time artist now. Oh, it's so monotonous to do this, right? That's exactly what the brain does. So it's, that's why meditation is so important. That's why gratitude is so important because it kind of reminds you of where you are in life and to take stock in how far you've come, uh, the goals that you've achieved and to really have that present in your mind and appreciate everything that you have and what you're doing. So hopefully this has been helpful on some level to everybody. Uh, Reach out to me as you always can on social media, on the socials, email on uh, Smoke Signals, YouTube, uh, the podcast, whatever. Whatever it is, just reach out to me. And hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all staying funky, fresh, and happy during these times. I know we're uh, still in the midst of it all. So now's the time to sit back and, and have some gratitude. So thank you all for listening. Thank you all for bringing the podcast to where it is today. Thank you to Feedspot for putting me on that top well, for putting me and the podcast, for putting the podcast on the top 25 art podcast that you must follow for 2020. That's awesome. Very grateful for that. And now we're on to the next. Keep it on, keep it on, keep it on creating good content for y'all and hope to see you back here next time. See you soon, everybody. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here and I'm grateful to be in your ears. 
Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.